Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks, and by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Silicon Valley at Hadoop Summit 2015. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. Join my co-host, George Gilbert, big data analyst at wikibon.com, and Anjul Bombri, VP of Big Data Analytics at IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Thank you, John. So, this ecosystem is big data. Uh -huh. Hadoop's a big part of it, but the big data is a bigger conversation, but yet Hadoop is growing. Gartner's reporting numbers that over 50% of the enterprise, which I think might be a little bit light, might be more, mm -hmm. are engaging in Hadoop. Uh, what's new with IBM and what's happening with the ecosystem of Hadoop and how are you guys uh, playing with it? Sure. Um, you, know, you know, we've been on this journey of uh, where we embraced Hadoop um, almost like five years ago and uh, have uh, done work in the Hadoop core as well as uh, uh, built capabilities on uh, top of Hadoop, uh, like SQL on Hadoop, like bringing things like text analytics, uh, machine learning, um, embracing R and uh, uh, you know enabling R programmers and users to uh, use the the scalability of uh, Hadoop and build uh, uh, algorithms that can scale for big data. Um, so so we've definitely added value on the top. And uh, you know, uh, recently there's a formation of uh, the Open Data Platform, uh, where um, you know over a dozen industry um, uh, vendors in the space join that uh, to really bring more standardization around Hadoop. I mean, you know, one thing that we'll all acknowledge is that Hadoop is not one project, but you know, multiple projects, like 20 projects and to get standardization around those and to get uh, interoperability, uh, something like ODP was needed. So we are definitely very excited about uh, that being the next step, uh, which I uh, uh, absolutely feel will drive even more adoption and uh, will grow the Hadoop market faster. We were saying on our intro today that um, you know having ODP out there, it's kind of like Google search, it's organic, which uh -huh. is open source, pure uh -huh. Hadoop open source, and then there's also kind of on the right hand side, the ads and whatnot, stable, users know what they're getting when they click on ads at Google, mm -hmm. so that was kind of my weird metaphor, but like with standard ODP, mm -hmm. you guys now can support a hardened version around that at mm -hmm. IBM and others, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while not compromising the innovation in open source. Is mm -hmm. that kind of the strategy? Because you don't, customers not moving as fast as say open source. Is that yes. kind of the, the thesis behind it? No, absolutely, John, because uh, you know, the, the essence of ODP is all around um, uh, compatibility and collaboration, right? And while uh, working in the context of uh, Apache, right? So it's uh, it's not like we deviate from that, right? So we work in the context of Apache. And what this allows us to do, I think, you know, twofold. One is it really allows um, all of us to pool our resources and um, harden the Hadoop core, right? Because instead of each vendor working on different versions of these different projects, uh, making fixes, and then you know you lose time by the time those fixes get into the, the code base and everybody else picks it up. But if we were to standardize around that, if we are using the same versions, we are testing the same versions, so, so that makes the whole Hadoop core much more stable and reliable, and we are not, uh, you know, our, our resources get pooled. And at the same time, it helps us to innovate on top of uh, the Hadoop core, right? Which is uh, you know around text, around machine learning, around SQL engines. Uh, those are sort of like the horizontal engines, if you may, which are built on top of Hadoop core. Uh, so that innovation continues. Yeah. Um, and uh, the same thing for like ISVs who are building uh, vertical applications uh, leveraging Hadoop. 
uh, it gives them an opportunity now that instead of testing, you know, their applications against seven or ten different versions of Hadoop distributions, they build ones. They are focused on innovating on those solutions and not spending time on testing against every version of Hadoop. So, so both the horizontal engines, the innovation, and the vertical application innovation uh, gets you know focus goes faster, and uh, there's a broader uh, set of customers that is now able to use these, right? Because there's no, it's almost like um, you don't want customers to get locked in because they went with one vendor's version of Hadoop. I mean, that's unfortunate, right? That, that in some sense, we are saying, uh, you know, software is open source, but, uh, you know, if you lock these customers in in other ways, um, it's, um, I, I think that's hurting the, the, the adoption and the growth of Hadoop. Would it, be fair, would it be fair to say that Apache solved the problem of sort of the the upstream standardization of individual projects, mm -hmm. but that Hadoop has grown so fast mm -hmm. that you know there's it gives it's delivered innovation, mm -hmm. but the governance model of Apache doesn't lend itself to standardizing the breadth of innovation. The, something like what 17 projects in a typical <laughs> distro. Uh -huh. So ODP was needed downstream to standardize that core. Mm -hmm. How many? Tell us about so exactly what's in the, in the core, mm -hmm. and then sort of how, when the vendors will be aligned around that core, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then when that starts to expand. Sure, now that's that's a that's an excellent point. That it's not uh, you know like you said, if it was only one project, <laughs> and that's all there was, then you know then people can just download it from uh, uh, you know Apache itself and be done. The very fact that. Um, there are companies that have formed around just around Hadoop distributions to start with, uh, you know, proves the point that it is, uh, uh, you know, that kind of uh, discipline, if you may, was needed, right? Now ODP kind of takes it to the next level that that was a good step, but you don't want fragmentation and fracturing happening because of companies that were trying to bring sanity to this are now lending to fracturing, right? Um, so while ODP right now, it comprises of uh, some core Hadoop projects like uh, HDFS, like MapReduce and Yarn, which really enabled everybody to write distributed applications. Um, Ambari is another uh, you know, project that, that, that was added to it, so it's really these four projects. And um, something like Ambari was needed so that there is a common way for um, all these different projects as well as the value adds on top to be able to be installed, configured, uh, you know, to be able to do the monitoring and alerting in a, in, in a standard way, right? You don't want uh, that, you know, if you have Hadoop projects or services running in the cluster. Then you have the value adds running in the cluster. Then you have ISV applications running in the cluster. Like, to just administer this, if you're dealing with five different consoles, I mean, that's a nightmare to deal with, right? So, so the core started with these four projects, but that's just the first step. And that'll help bring interoperability to an extent, but um, I, I think you know we would. Uh, it would be incorrect to say that these are the only four projects that are needed uh, to bring complete interoperability. What so, comes? What comes next? So, so you know things like we have to look at things like HBase, Hive, uh, Scoop, right? that what is going to be the common way to ingest data, what's going to be the, um, you know, as as information is being stored in HBase and Hive, and there are value adds that are leveraging those components, then they, their standardization is needed as well. So, um, so those are some things that are being discussed uh, in the, you know, the ODP technical working groups, and, um, uh, you know, because we have to work all together in the community to agree to those things and then bring it to ODP. So talk about the next, beyond Hadoop. Um, mm -hmm. I had a chat at IBM Interconnect with Inhi Chusa and mm -hmm. we were talking about Hadoop and 
you know, IBM, Hadoop is a small part of the overall IBM vision mm -hmm. of big data. Mm -hmm. Customers also have the same perspective where they, are, they have mind share with Hadoop, great place to store stuff, mm -hmm. but acting on the data is a big discussion. Mm -hmm. What technology are you guys selling on top of Hadoop? What can you share in terms of what use cases are working with customers? Mm -hmm. um, what products are, are working for you mm -hmm. guys? Can mm -hmm. you just share a little bit of insight into what's happening within the IBM products with respect to customer deployments? Yeah, sure. So, so you're absolutely right, John, that uh, you know, Hadoop is obviously one of the one of the frameworks, right? One of the one of the processing engines from a like MapReduce standpoint that uh, that that we are leveraging. But um, in terms of uh, you know what things are needed now uh, to really bring value from data uh, and and you know turn it into intelligent insights, right? <laughs> Is that you know how do you uh, prep this data? How do you cleanse this data? How do you wrangle this data? I mean, you've, I, we've all heard this from uh, every customer that they, they're spending 70 to 80 percent of the time shaping the data, right? Getting it really ready so that they can get value out of that data. So there is um, there is work that's happening in in IBM as well as outside uh, around data wrangling, data shaping, and being able to do it both programmatically as well as you know things using things like SQL for transformation, uh, using things like text analytics, machine learning to be able to do that, uh, and then there is uh, you know you need absolutely very powerful visualization, um, and uh, you know we are embracing uh, D3 as a, uh, as a as a you know as an extensible framework from a visualization standpoint. Um, and you know, just to make it easier and easier to shape that data. Then, of course, it comes to that you know you want to be able to, from an IBM standpoint, of course, you know we have uh, our predictive and prescriptive analytics portfolio around uh, SPSS. So we are certainly you know from where we are going, we are going to be leveraging things like uh, like of course projects from Hadoop as well as Spark to be able to scale out the, the predictive and prescriptive models and algorithms. How do you explain to customers the comment you made earlier, because I liked how you described that, the horizontal engines and then the verticals, because mm -hmm. vertical stacks have been around for, for decades, sure. right? So now horizontally scalable is a cloud DevOps concept, and mm -hmm. we've been speculating on theCUBE that you know, analytics and big data has, is the killer app that mm -hmm. DevOps has been waiting for. Mm -hmm. Because now with the scale piece, you have new kinds of innovations, mm -hmm. new net new capabilities that are mm -hmm. emerging. Mm -hmm. Not just the blocking and tackling stuff yeah. we see offload, yeah. you know, and analytics, but like real time to get to that cognitive computing or as George coined the term, systems of intelligence. Uh -huh. Well, well borrowed from Jeffrey Moore, but we want to dive into actually how they're built <laughs> with, with you and others. But y yeah, like, you know, taking Spark and Hadoop, uh -huh. very different philosophies for, uh -huh. for how to build systems of intelligence. Mm -hmm. When you look at, you know, a customer problem, mm -hmm. you'll see, you know, Hadoop on one side, Spark on the other. How do you um, make the choice as to which to use? Mm -hmm. Spark is obviously less mature, mm -hmm. but much simpler. Mm -hmm. um, Hadoop getting more hardened, um, but you know, there's that complexity factor. Mm -hmm. So, so let's. Um, <laughs> um, so, if we look at uh, look at Spark, right? Yeah. I mean, there are obviously uh, projects from uh, Apache Hadoop that are still very relevant, right? Even when you are building uh, applications, leveraging the the Spark core processing engine. So you know you still need something like Ambari. You still need you know there is data that is going to be stored somewhere. So HDFS uh, is is certainly still very relevant, right? Yarn is relevant because you know you're still running these applications in in a clustered environment. Now when it comes to like what are the benefits of Spark? You asked, right? Where would you use one over the other? When you say one over the other, I would think it is. Uh, Hadoop MapReduce uh, versus uh, you know the the Spark core processing engine. So of course we know Hadoop MapReduce is very batch oriented in nature, and uh, um, you know so applications for which 
that kind of latency is um, is acceptable, then they can continue to use Hadoop MapReduce. But when you go to uh, you know look at Spark, there is benefits in terms of obviously uh, performance, uh, and it is also uh, you know functionally it is very rich, right? So the kind of applications that it is enabling is interactive analytic applications, right? Where uh, you're still dealing with big data, but um, the latency is extremely important, right? Low latency is key. So in in those kinds of uh, uh, you know when those kinds of requirements have to be met, then it's you know uh, Spark. Uh, Spark certainly offers advantages in terms of uh, performance based on, you know, I mean, there is the, um, there, there are details that we could get into, but it is making it easier for, um, you know, in memory, right? Running it in memory makes it much, much faster. Being able to, um, you know, with the, um, the, the interim results that are being stored in Spark is using local storage. Um, and uh, you know the execution, from an execution standpoint, you're not starting and stopping the JVM every time, right? You have the JVM mm -hmm. running in the, uh, on every node. So, so the tasks that have to be run, they run as a thread uh, in the JVM. So all of that, right? Now when you come to Hadoop, you're starting stopping JVMs. So the scheduling in Spark is much better. So that certainly improves performance, right? So even if you take the memory away, you'll at least get three times the performance just based on these four benefits. Yeah. Angel, I got to ask you the question about what's going on here at the show for IBM mm -hmm. and the conversations that you're involved in. What are the top three conversations you're having here at the show mm -hmm. around IBM with customers and partners and, and people on the show floor? Sure. So um, there is uh, there are a lot of questions that are coming around ODP, right? That uh, you know people really care about this interoperability. They are they are wary of vendor lock-in, and uh, the the promise that ODP has shown that you know it's going to offer them a much richer technology palette to work with, where they could use um, you know. Hadoop core maybe from vendor A, uh, you know, a SQL engine from vendor B, a data wrangling tool from vendor C. So this way they could get the best of breed of, uh, you know, from different vendors is something that they are excited about. So so that's a topic that has been coming up that, you know, uh, and, and then yeah. if when you talk to the partners, they want to know that, okay, with this, can they build ones and run anywhere and everywhere. Customers want trust. Yeah. At large enterprises, they don't want to be the that scorpion <laughs> bite, that they don't want that, you know, that joke where the scorpion crosses the river. You know what I'm talking about. It's uh -huh. like, they don't want, they want predictability. Yes. They want some standardization. Are you seeing that too? And what, what comments can you share and color on that? Yeah, like, uh, you know, when you talk to the, I, I uh, met some of our customers from their IT group and uh, they feel that with with ODP, they can, uh, you know, th this is going to bring some sanity in their lives where, uh, uh, you know, there would be one way for, you know, like uh, we were talking about Ambari, right, to install and configure and monitor and, you know, the cluster. Um, it has been a nightmare for them to deal with the Hadoop administration, if you may, right? And, uh, uh, you know, one of them was, uh, uh, was sharing that you know I can finally go on my vacation, which you know I used to keep planning, and every time I, there would be some something that goes down in my cluster, and I would be like, "Oh, this is mission critical. You need to be here to fix this." So you know, I don't know whether that these people can go on vacation tomorrow, but you know, our goal is <laughs> to get sanity in the lives of uh, you know IT operations yeah, and folks. also support too. You guys are delivering other products mm -hmm. and you need a stable core with ODP, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and it brings, uh, you know, a whole degree of uh, cohesion in their IT infrastructure. So, you know, when when uh, IT is happy, when ISVs feel that what they are doing uh, is, uh, you know, the, their market is being broadened, 
Um, well, they man, want delivery too. They got to deliver a solution. They yeah. don't want to have more costs. They exactly. want gross profit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they want happy customers yeah. that write big checks. Yeah. Right. And and like you were saying, I mean, cloud as a delivery model is something that a lot of customers are also looking at. I mean, you know, yeah. at, at IBM, of course, we have for both Hadoop and Spark, we have uh, our services available on the cloud. Yes. And uh, it, do you wrap those in? I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. this is a key point. Do you wrap those in a different tooling, or do you use Ambari? Uh, we are using um, Ambari right now. On the cloud. Yeah. When you say right now, does that mean there's... Before, uh, you know, I mean, before ODP, uh, we, we were using a different set of technologies, but okay. now we are standardizing on Ambari. Okay, All right, great. Final question for you. I know we're getting tight the hook here. What is the vibe of the show. What is the main thing going on here in Silicon Valley at this show for the folks that couldn't make it? What's the key message you'd send to the, so, your friends out there? Yeah, so at least, you know, at, like at this event, I have seen uh, that the number of uh, customer sessions has grown much more than from previous years. Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, almost like it's like a 50-50 split, which, uh, you know, uh, going back, even a couple of years, right, at the Hadoop Summit, it used to be much more just around the technology and less about customer adoption. Um, but so it's very nice to see that, you know, now more people are sharing the use cases, they are talking about the value that uh, they're getting from Hadoop for the business, right? And that's, um, I think, uh, you know, uh, All right. Andrew Huge Bombry, step VP. in the right direction. Thank you for very much for your insights. Um, very <laughs> cognitive insights here inside theCUBE, cognitive computing, sharing the data with you. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.